Hi guys, it's Aoife from Fred Weasley Diet Laughing and I'm here with a weekly wrap up and not really a weekly wrap up, more of like a recent read from the last two to three weeks because it has been a hot minute since I recorded and um, because I've just been so busy and lazy and I haven't recorded anything in a couple of weeks. So this is just going to be the books I have read for the past while. Um, I haven't gotten like loads read, like, you know, the way I normally would because I've just had a very busy few weeks um, but I can't wait to tell you all the books that I have read because some of them have been pretty great. The first book I finished after the last time I did my wrap up was Abaddon's Gate by James S.A. Corey. This is the third book in the Expanse series um, which you guys know I have been reading um, slowly and this one just follows on with the crew of a ship called the Rocinante um, and once again they are you know put into this position where they end up having to save everyone's lives um, and they have to generally be just like brave and great and do all these crazy things. Um, this one I actually think was probably my least favourite out of all the books so far. The second book definitely has been my favourite one. Um, I wasn't as crazy about the side characters in this one though I did find them, like I did find them interesting. One character is a bit of an anti-hero um, and I found her really really interesting and her kind of thought processes and her background um, were quite intriguing to follow and to see kind of just the way her mind worked. Um, so she was pretty great and I also did like the fact that there was, um, like obviously we are like there is religion in this book um, and there are characters who are of lots of different religions and cultures um, and we do see kind of how religion plays a part in this book with some people as well. We have a character who is, she's a little bit of um, kind of a reverend or a preacher um, and we see how she kind of, how she believes in like this massive like space world um, which like is really interesting so I did I did like seeing that and it was done in a way that like you know it wasn't um, over the top it was respectful um, and yeah I just I just thought it was nice to see um, religion properly being brought into it with a character who ha you know religion is a huge part of her life um, so yeah once again there are characters in this who I feel always seem to have like a bit of a backseat where I feel like they are very much a front seat driver in the series um, and I'm still waiting for her like book where she has like one of the proper like a proper POV where we are properly getting the story from her point of view um, and because I think she is actually the best character in the whole lot and not the male characters around her I think she is actually the best one her name is Naomi um, so yeah I'm waiting for that still but um, so I gave this I think I gave this a 3 3.25 out of 5 stars over. The next book I read was the Queen's Wing by Jessica Thorne. This is kind of a YA sci-fi slash fantasy um, action book. Um, I got this off Neck Alley and I actually really enjoyed this. I wasn't really sure what to expect going into this one but I did I did very much end up enjoying it. The main character in this is called Belle and she's kind of like the, I think she's like the great grand niece or something of the king of her planet um, and like she's a noble but she's not really like nothing is really expected of her and she just likes to go off and um, they're kind of like a a nation that's full of kind of they're like have really good military um, and her family are all involved in the military and so is she she really likes uh, being a pilot she loves flying these kind of um, contraptions that are basically like little airplanes I think um, and she's really really good and it's what she wants to do for the rest of her life um, and then out of nowhere the entire royal family is wiped out by this um, warring uh, nation and she ends up being like her dad ends up having to become the king because he's the next in line that's still alive and she is the princess and she suddenly has to be married off to this uh, king of another planet and like her whole kind of life just gets flipped upside down in a matter of minutes. I really like this like there was like some really like kind of YA tropes in this but ones that I really really like the whole kind of like you know the um arranged marriage that does end up being like something tur that turns out to be really, really lovely that turns out to be a relationship full of chemistry and um, I feel like Belle herself is a really really great um, strong character like she has like really great strong characteristics um, of leadership as well and I feel like she was really respected for a lot of it um, in the book and we see how the people that she is going to become their queen and um, they soon learn to trust her and to listen to her and you know just because she's a woman they don't you know scoff at her they don't um you know turn away from her ideas they end up really respecting her and listening her listening to her and she becomes their leader um, and I really really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed seeing her character progression from someone who was a little bit unsure of what she was supposed to be doing as a princess and you really see her kind of lead up to not just becoming a princess but becoming a queen um, and like her character progression and her character growth is really great in this book I really really enjoyed it. There is a love triangle in this book which I feel was completely unnecessary Um, there is a obviously there is the uh, guy that she is going to get married to and then there is the soldier who is like kind of like the head of her um 
Queen's guard, I guess, who has been known her her entire life and is almost like a foster brother to her, but actually she's been in love with him forever. And like, it's really, really cliche. And I feel like a lot of the scenes between them and like the romance between them was like, and I say romance lightly because there wasn't that much of it, but it was just really, really forced. And like, she kept repeating herself about how much she wanted to launch herself and kiss him and do this, all these things with him. And yet there wasn't like that much actually between them. Um, and I kind of got, got a little bit annoyed about that and about just kind of the, the repetition there. Um, but at the same time, I enjoyed her relationship dynamic with the with the actual king as well. Um, I found that a lot more interesting. I think Khan. I think his name is Khan. Yeah, Khan. Um, I much preferred her relationship dynamic with Khan. It was just way more interesting. The other one was just so bland and boring. Um, and there were parts of this that were quite predictable. Um, and I could tell. I could, like I knew what was going to happen but I did still really enjoy this book and I'll definitely re be reading on to the next one um, and I think if you just like a really good YA sci-fi and you just want something you know to just like keep you entertained for a while this is definitely this kind of book and um, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars as I said I'm definitely going to read the next one which is out uh, next year the next book I read was another Neck Alley book and it was The Five Wishes of Mr. Murray McBride by Joe Simple. Um, this is kind of a really cute book about this old man who is 100 years old and he's like, he's so ready to just like die. He's a little bit grumpy. Um, his wife died a couple of years previously. He feels very alone. He has a grandson who he thinks is just like kind of waiting for him to die so he can like inherit all of, all of his things. Um, and then he goes to the hospital one day and he meets this uh, little boy called Jason and Jason has a heart um, condition and he's kind of needs a heart transplant eventually and he is basically he's dying and Jason has this these kind of a list of five wishes he wants to do before he dies and Murray decides that he wants to help Jason uh, fulfill these wish these wishes become like really good friends like best friends and it's just this like really cute sweet story about an old man who suddenly finds a reason to live again and a little boy who doesn't have that much time but is suddenly you know his life is suddenly being like full of joy and goodness and friendship and yeah, it's it's lovely. Um I gave this like I gave this kind of like a middling like three, three point five stars, mostly because I just felt like it was almost just like too sweet and nice at times. Um like Murray is like he's quite grumpy and you know there's there is a bit of repetition as well in like kind of some things he says and things he gives out about. Um and what I, the only way I can describe this book is it's kind of like one of those like Hallmark family made for TV movies where everything is just nice, nice, nice. Um, or like you know something you'd see on like Netflix, like the, like the ABC Holiday kind of um, shows that you see, the movies that you see put up on Netflix and stuff. Um, which they're really, really nice, but sometimes you just want a little bit more spice to them as well. Um, and there is something that happens at the end of this book, which I actually can't say what it is because it's... Um, so something happens that happens at the end of another very famous book and I just feel like, you know, this book is like, you know, it was also has been made into a movie and like I was just a little bit like when it happened I was just like this is literally exactly what happened in this other book um, and I can't say what that book is because it would be a massive spoiler for what happens at the end of this book. Um, but yeah, so I was a bit like, hmm. Uh, but overall I did enjoy this it did take me longer to read than I thought it would and um, it was longer than I think it needed to be um so yeah I gave it three 3.5 stars it wasn't fantastic but it was just a little bit of sweet a little bit of fun um and yeah if you just need something nice this would be a great book to read. The next book I read was one of my non-fiction November picks that was The Bloodied Field by Michael Foley. This is about um, a day in Irish history um, in uh, November uh, 1921 and it's about a time when these um, kind of mercenary soldiers employed by the British um, in Ireland uh, stormed onto a football field and killed uh, a bunch of people, basically shot into a crowd and killed a lot of innocent people who were just out enjoying a football game. Um, and it was in retaliation to a bunch of um, British uh, agents um, being killed by the IRA that morning morning um and they thought for some reason that they were okay to go and shoot a bunch of people in a field um so yeah this is really interesting in terms of Irish history um it is a day I know about um but it's not what a day I have like kind of studied like really deeply um there are parts of this that I think wouldn't be suitable for people who I don't really know Ireland that well like there's a bunch of this because this happened in the, on the GAA field um, and between these two like during a game between two particular counties um, there is a lot of background history in like the GAA and the GAA's ties with the IRA and um, the background between these two counties and some games they've played before and um, why they were on the field that day and um, kind of what games they had won previously to lead up to that day um, and I feel like people who aren't Irish probably would have no interest and wouldn't really know what they're ta we're talking about in this book because obviously you have to like you know a GAA is an Irish sport so um, if you're not really 
if you're either you're not Irish, like some Irish people don't really know that much about GAA either because they're not interested in it. So if you're not really interested in GAA, you're not really going to find it really, really interesting. Um, I myself, like I like GAA, but like I wouldn't be as mad into it where I was really interested in everything that was going on in this book. Um, when it came to the actual kind of the events of what happened um, with the Black and Tans, I found a bit more interesting and the... Um, the events afterwards, how they kind of conducted an inquest into it, how the British Parliament reacted to the deaths. Um, you know, I found all of that really, really interesting. Um, so I gave it like a four out of five stars, probably more of like a 3.75 maybe. The next book I read was Our Endless Number of Days by Claire Fuller. I do actually have a physical copy of this, I just don't have it here with me. Um, and this is about a girl who, um, fa whose father kidnapped her when she was about nine years old and he was a survivalist and he just brought them to this like really really remote woods and basically that's where she lived for the next like seven years of her life and um, thinking that the whole world had ended and only her and her father were the last people alive and um, and she ended up growing up in this like really really kind of strange environment with just her dad and we are kind of seeing what happens kind of after that and we're getting kind of flashbacks to like a present and a past tense and this is good um, I liked the descriptions of it and um, there were some really lovely descriptions of nature and I just feel like the dynamic, the family dynamic in this book was really really intriguing um, and I kind of liked how Claire kind of delved into it, this kind of father-daughter relationship and daughter-mother relationship and how everything kind of fell apart and fell together. Like this book didn't wow me, I enjoyed it um, and I enjoyed that it wasn't a very long read um, but I don't think there was anything in it that like really really gripped me or really had me you know wanting to turn those pages. Um, it's kind of a quieter book and um, I think the way the, her the character's imagination, Peggy's imagination runs in this as well is quite, it's quite like, I don't know, you just have to kind of be prepared for anything to happen as well um, even though it's not like an action-packed book you still have to be expecting all sorts of weird things to happen in it and um, so I gave it a three out of five stars and the next book I read was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee and this one was just a very fun rompy book that you know was just as I said it was just like a little bit of light entertainment and I really enjoyed it I've heard so much about this book um, and I was really looking forward to finally getting into it and this is about Monty and Percy who are doing the grand tour of Europe um, and they are just Monty basically is not his father's favourite person um, um, is not very, treated very well by his father and he's basically been told that he has to start behaving better or he's going to be completely disinherited and Monty doesn't react to that very well at all and um, so he's going on this grand tour with Percy who is his best friend but also he is someone who he has a massive crush on um, and his sister is traveling with him for a while Felicity who is just you know she is just brilliant she um, I don't even know how to describe Felicity she is just she's a woman you would want by your side in time of crisis that's all I can uh, say about her she's she's excellent I really enjoyed her Um this yeah so this was just so much fun and um, I really liked just how ridiculous it was at times and um, I really liked Monty like at first I didn't really like Monty I kind of felt he was a little bit just like in your face and just like just his antics you're just like oh come on like he's very like you no know, like he's he's always the guy that would get drunk at the party and you know fall over or you know fall out a window or something Um and he can be a little bit annoying at first but eventually like you really get used to him and you get used to kind of all the things he's hiding behind his humour and behind the way he acts and you realise he's just this really kind of insecure guy underneath it all and someone who just really needs to be loved and you just like you he he eventually just becomes like your little like your little puppy that you just want to take care of Um, I really enjoyed Percy as well but Monty definitely stole my heart by the end of it Um, yeah this is just crazy like this like there's just so much like crazy things in this from like Monty running through like a palace naked at one point to you know pirates uh to you know underground watery tombs in Venice like you go through all you're like in France we're in Barcelona at one point uh, then Venice like you go through all sorts of places in Europe and it was just so much fun um, and I'll definitely be picking up the second book I think which is uh The Lady's Guide to Piracy in Petticoats or something something along those lines which is by Felicity so I really want to um I really really want to read that one because that's about Felicity and she was just brilliant so I want to learn all about her in the next one um, so I gave this a four out of five stars and I really really enjoyed it and the last book I will talk about here is the audiobook I finished this week and that was Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner this is a YA sci-fi by Jules and Mia and they are basically both on this planet called Gaia and Jules is a scholar and 
Mia is criminal basically she's there to scavenge anything she can and bring back to earth to sell so she can help um, buy back her sister from this terrible club that her sister has been kind of enslaved into um, and Jules is trying to clear his father's name because his father has been uh, arrested for saying things that are true but people don't want to believe um, and Jules thinks by discovering some things on this planet he can help um, clear his father's name. So the two of them end up kind of pairing up when they are both almost killed by these people um, and through that uh, they kind of get to know each other kind of two kids from two different sides of the track and um, eventually they just end up on this make like crazy alien world adventure and eventually you know they end up probably having to save the earth. I did really enjoy this for the most part. Narrators were really really good and um, there was uh, two narrators, one female one male for both the characters. They complemented each other quite well, they were quite easy to listen to and nice. The male character was a uh, narrator was Steve West who I've listened to before and I really really loved. I cannot remember the name of the second one I think she was Alex McKenna but I can't remember and um, she was really good as well I have so much too much to say about this book I think there was a point where I felt like it kind of dried a little bit and I got a little bit bored and um, but it did really pick up at the end and it got really really kind of fast-paced and action-packed near the end and I was really kind of like really really like excited to see like what would happen in the next chapter in the next chapter in the next chapter and it ended on a really really good cliffhanger as well so I can't wait to read the next one which I think is out really soon and um, so I think the next one will be excellent I think it's only a duology as well so the next book will be the last book um, but yeah, I really liked how this ended, um, though it did drag a little bit in the middle for me, but I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. So does everything I've read recently. Please let me know what you guys have read down below. I would love to know as always, and I'll see you guys again next time.